This program is made possible by viewers like you. Please consider donating to the Stevens City Historical Archives to further support the history of our community. This home of ours has been inhabited for the past 250 years by settlers, families, and even some of the greatest generals and soldiers in our nation's history. Every place has a wealth of stories far beyond the traditional knowledge among the vast majority of its townspeople, even in our city of 1,900. We here at Stevens City Historical Archives remember the obscurity known as Pop Kids Entertainment Software. For a brief period between 1988 and 1996, Stevens City was home to one of the East Coast's most prestigious small-scale software developers, operating far outside of the likes of metropolises like Washington, D.C. or New York City. Stevens City's very own pop kids contributed an often forgotten amount to the blossoming field of video game development, a field that remains a pop culture phenomenon. It is imperative that we remember days long past. Something should not be left forgotten. Pop Kids Entertainment opened its doors on January 11, 1988, during an uncharacteristically frigid winter season. Its two founders, Wallace Mason and Douglas Roth, were newcomers to our little community, and here created their home as well as dozens of jobs. Mason came from a background of law and Roth from the University of Virginia with a degree in English. From their founding onwards, Pop Kids began developing and distributing a vast amount of children's games, releasing at least one every month until their eventual closure in 1996, due to a mass exodus of employees following a sudden and substantial loss in revenue and an event of hysteria called the Pop Kids Plague. From its opening to its closure, it remained a spectacle to the community and even a tourist attraction with its child-friendly tours about programming and Roborock, a science fiction-themed side venture featuring a cast of unforgettable science fiction characters. The day the company closed was a sad day indeed, and the company faded in the public eye just as quickly as it seemed to appear. Robo Roborock was soon torn down, and all company holdings abandoned. A year later, the extinct company was once again the talk of the town, but this time for far less positive reasons. On the morning of February 22, 1997, the vacated building that once held the company's offices was surrounded by dozens of Stephen City's finest in the form of our fire department and police service. A fire had begun sporadically due to unknown causes, with the bodies of two individuals being found though burnt far beyond any means of identification. Soon after, three Stevens City citizens formerly associated with the company were reported missing, Keith Bainridge, Melissa Garth, and one of Pop Kids' founders, Wallace Mason. Despite the bittersweet ending to the Pop Kids story, several of its former employees and many of its fans are still walking around town today, some remembering Pop Kids, others forgetting. We here at Stephen City's Historical Archives have been collecting media to reminisce on the Pop Kids phenomenon. The following is one of the earliest works of the company, The Great Trick Spectacular. This interactive storybook was created to celebrate Halloween. This was decided to be an appropriate inclusion in today's video as we are approaching Halloween. We hope you enjoy.
Fun, right? Nothing can save the ruin Halloween like precious time between a father and son, especially with fishing involved, and especially on a holiday night. This next tape was generously donated to us by Douglas Roth, one of the two founders and the creative lead for Pop Kids Entertainment Software. This tape is a full recording of the first major press conference held by Pop Kids Entertainment in November of 1989. This 16-minute presentation by their head of marketing reveals the merchandising plan for many of its characters, as well as the plan for the company going forward. While this recording was meant solely for a few prominent investors who couldn't make the trip that day, Mr. Roth had made several copies for his own personal records. Without further ado, we present you this moment of revolution from the early history of the company. If you guys don't mind quieting down. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, well welcome to the first ever Pop Kids Entertainment Press Conference. We'll be ready to start in just another minute here. <laughs> if, uh, if you guys haven't already seen our intern Gary in the back, wave to him. Hi, Gary. <laughs> uh, Gary has with him a device for recording the audio of our conference, and we are going to send copies over to the local news as well as some of our investors who could not make it here today. <coughs> so, everybody. Make sure you're on your best behavior. So, uh, so yeah, I'm getting the thumbs up from Wallace down here to, to go ahead and start. So yeah, let's, let's get started. So, hi. <laughs> My name is Brady Wester, and I'm the head of marketing here at Pop Kids Entertainment. For the past two years, we have provided high quality, innovative entertainment to the families and children of Northern Virginia. But today, we have something new planned, uh, something a little unexpected. We have been in talks for the past few months with customers investors, and distributors about what makes our products great. The number one answer among all of these groups is quantity. No matter what genre you're looking for, no matter what age range, well, we have a game for it. In the past two years since our opening, in January of 1988, we have developed over 30 games. 30! Our talented and driven programmers and artists have managed to create a library of interactive storybooks that outnumber some of our century's most prolific authors. But we are not here to talk about quantity. We are here today to talk about something new. Something that, as a car guy, I can only say, will put our company into second gear. I am, of course, Scott, talking about the opening of our second office in Atlanta, Georgia. While we will continue to be headquartered right here in Stephen City, as well as continuing to create our games here, we will be opening the second office to handle distribution and distributor slash investor relations. Uh, what is the significance of this, Brady, you ask? Well, by creating this office and headquartering in such a large metropolitan area, you're pursuing a new goal, to get Pop Kids Storybook Discs into the hands of families throughout the Southeast by December of next year. We have had many investors come to us from out of state, and frankly, we are just thrilled. thrilled, 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 thrilled. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods... No, Charles, then. If you go down in the woods today, 
Before he brought me there, I was so cold. They were cold too. But now, I am not like them. He made me warm. He made me so warm. I could still feel the cold in my ears, but everything else felt amazing. Do not scream, David. I want to thank you. He wants to thank you too. I love you, David. I love you. We would like to thank the many contributors who have made our collection of this invaluable documentation possible. We would like to especially thank founder Douglas Roth and all of the other former employees who have so kindly donated many pieces of their own records and media. We look forward to the continued donations by former employees, citizens, and out-of-town benefactors alike. If you have any more information, please feel free to leave a comment below or contact us through our website. My name is Francesca Roth, and I hope you continue to support our little project. Thank you.